Good morning, First Congregational Church. In 2018, First Congo was the perfect and a safe place for me to land during a time when I had left everything that was safe and familiar to me behind in San Diego. Fabulous weather, a job that I loved, family who had come to accept me as my authentic self, a daughter who loved and cherished me, a faith family I had helped guide through the open and affirming process as a United Church of Christ congregation, where I had served as vice chair of the diaconal board, chair of the revival committee, and member of the church council all to become a Master of Divinity student at Bright. My first Sunday here at First Congo, I remember when Rhonda and all of you gave me that First Congo extravagant welcome. I remember meeting with Reverend Leanne and the beautiful story she shared with me about how she was called to this church, which made me value and appreciate First Congo even more. Reverend Leanne graciously asked me about my desire and interest in preaching during my time here in Fort Worth at First Congo. Before I had accepted an opportunity to be a student pastor at New Church in Dallas with the Reverend Dr. Joe Hudson, which turned out to be a wonderful experience. First Congo, thank you for your graciousness. Reverend Leanne, thank you for inviting me to preach the good news in this digital space. It is an honor and a joy to be here, even during a time when there's so much uncertainty and unrest in our country as a result of COVID-19 and the pandemic of racial injustice in our country. First Congo, it's great to be with you. Let us pray. Spirit of our most gracious and loving God, fall fresh on us. Give us ears to hear, a mind and a heart to understand and receive an inspired word. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ. All God's children say, Amen. I want to thank Mike for reading our text this morning, our biblical text about Jesus and the Samaritan woman. But before I get into the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman, I would like to share another story with you. Recently during the, my morning walk, I met a woman named Ann Santana. When I had stopped to watch the Colonial PGA Golf Tournament behind a barrier of hedges and a fence at the Colonial Golf Country Club with no gallery this year as a result of COVID-19. As a way of connecting, Anne shared her friendly smile with me, as many do during my morning walk, as an attempt to make me feel welcome, while others turn their heads to, or step aside to the other side of the street to make me invisible from their sight. So they do not have to acknowledge my presence, and others have this puzzled look on their faces and stares as to say, what are you doing around here? But Ann and I engaged in a friendly conversation that eventually led to a discussion about racial issues in our country. She shared with me that she had visited the National History Museum of African American Heritage and Culture and admitted that she had not known about the Emmett Till story until she went through the exhibit at the museum. 
we discussed how this part of American history remains a hidden truth and how many don't know about Emmett Till's story. In 1955, white men brutally murdered a 14-year-old black child and his mother had an open casket funeral showing his disfigured face and body for all to witness the results of hatred. Thousands seeing the body gave energy to the civil rights movement. I shared with Ann that during COVID-19, in the midst of this pandemic, I've been asking, where is God, considering all the deaths and disparities and the number of African Americans who had died from the disease? I also share with Ann how being in quarantine and sheltering in place allowed time for many in the world to stop and assess themselves and their values. And right when the world began to open up prematurely, George Floyd was murdered. Since the world was at somewhat of a standstill, we all had time to watch the modern day public lynching of George Floyd. And we're at a place to allow God to open our eyes, open our minds and hearts to the reality of continued violence and oppression of black bodies. Anne and I were able to connect on a personal level our views and concerns around racial injustices. I believe that God was right there as we connected while standing behind the barrier, just as Jesus and the Samaritan woman did at the well. In my sanctified imagination, I believe just as Jesus shared water with the Samaritan woman and dismantled social and racial and religious barriers, if whites who had seen the injustices of the murder of Emmett Till had pursued reparations and reconciliation towards the black community, perhaps we would now not be mourning the death of George Floyd and many other precious black lives that matter. But maybe it's just my imagination running away with me again. Now, starting with the sip of water, let us turn our attention to the text that was read. While traveling to Galilee, Jesus goes to Samaria. Around noon, Jesus makes a pit stop to rest and get some water. It just so happened that noon is the time when women gather at the well. However, the writer only makes mention of one woman who is unnamed in the text that Jesus interacts with. I believe Jesus was intentional in his engagement with the Samaritan woman and used the time as a teachable moment. So Jesus began his interaction with the woman by making a simple request. Give me a drink. Jesus is demonstrating his humanity in just the need for water. There is only one other time in the gospel that Jesus asked for something to quench his thirst, and it's when Jesus is on the cross. Now, Jesus was aware of the barriers that stood between him and the Samaritan woman. She was a woman, gender barrier. She was a Samaritan cultural barrier. There are different religious practices, another barrier. Just Jesus was making an attempt to put 
their differences aside. By going against the social and cultural norms to connect with the Samaritan woman, Jesus was not the first to point out the cultural and theological dilemmas. The woman does. Yet they were both aware of the troubled history that stood between them, the Jews and the Samaritans, in part because the Samaritans were in opposition of rebuilding the temple. However, they had the Torah, and they worshiped the same God. In conversation with this Samaritan woman, Jesus makes an effort to demonstrate their shared humanity and needs, a way to connect. The woman had concerns around drinking from the same cup as Jesus. The writer of the gospel used the words, our ancestor, in reference Jacob as the one who gave the well, signifying Jacob as the ancestor to both Jesus and the woman. So Jesus let the Samaritan woman know that he could fulfill a greater need with living water and she would never thirst again because the water was living water and was life-giving power of God in Jesus. The woman was perplexed about Jesus' ability to provide living water, but she eventually understood and believed and her faith was shared with others in her community. And they also believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Well, Jesus also dispels the importance of spe specific localized worship and pointed out to the woman that God will be worshiped in spirit and in truth because God is spirit. As if to say that location does not matter. But it is the truth and the spirit that's important in one's worship of God. This reminds me of how we're being church beyond the four walls of our churches during COVID-19 as a way as we lament the lynching of George Floyd, as America continues to reckon with the truth of racial injustices and violence against black bodies and the legacy of America's original sin, all during a time when our worship spaces are not accessible to us. My question is, will we worship in truth? Now, by the time the disciples came back on the scene, Jesus and the woman's theological conversation had ended. But the disciples were still questioning Jesus about speaking to the Samaritan woman. They were a little late for any attempt to discourage Jesus from engaging with the Samaritan woman. The barriers had already been dismantled and the woman now believed in the Messiah. In closing, I want to remind you, as children of God, we are all created in the image of God and created to be in community with each other. Constructed barriers serve as means to separate and divide us. God's kingdom of unity and peace can be, real, can be reality when the constructs of race and class are dismantled and the pandemic and the disease of racial injustices can be healed. I leave with one question. Who will you drink water with? Who are you giving life to? What racial and social constructs are you willing to recognize and make efforts to dismantle? Silence and lack of action makes one complicit. Let all God's children say, Amen. Amen.